Ever wondered why rocks are not all the same? Why some sparkle while others are dull? Or why some are rough while others are smooth? Well, you're in for a treat today. We're embarking on a journey into the intriguing world of rocks and minerals. A world where every stone tells a story. A world where the ordinary becomes extraordinary. From the fiery birth of igneous rocks to the transformative journey of metamorphic rocks and the peaceful rest of sedimentary rocks, we'll delve into the heart of our planet's silent storytellers. We'll also explore the unique physical attributes that set each rock and mineral apart, turning us all into rock detectives. And guess what? Those stones you see every day are not just stones. They have a multitude of uses and hold secrets of Earth's past. Stick around to explore the fascinating world of rocks and minerals, and you'll never look at a simple stone the same way again. Our journey begins with the rock cycle, the life story of rocks. The rock cycle is a bit like baking a cake, a very, very slow cake. It all starts with magma, the molten rock beneath the Earth's crust, much like the raw ingredients of our cake. When this magma cools and solidifies, we get igneous rocks. These are like our freshly baked cake straight out of the oven. But our cake doesn't stay fresh forever, does it? Over time, it crumbles, just like igneous rocks break down due to weathering and erosion. These smaller pieces, or sediments, are transported by wind and water, and eventually settle down, layer upon layer. Over millions of years, these layers compress and harden to form sedimentary rocks. It's like taking those cake crumbs and pressing them into a new dessert. But what if we apply heat and pressure to our dessert, without completely melting it? We'd end up with something new, wouldn't we? This is exactly what happens to sedimentary rocks. When they're buried deep within the earth, exposed to intense heat and pressure, they transform into metamorphic rocks. This is like our cake crumb dessert being made into a fancy gourmet treat. But the cycle doesn't stop there. These metamorphic rocks can melt back into magma if they're subjected to even more heat and pressure. And thus, our cake ingredients are ready to be baked again. Sometimes though, there's a shortcut in this cycle. Igneous rocks can directly transform into metamorphic rocks, skipping the sedimentary stage. It's like putting our fresh cake back into the oven to create a new dish. And just like how you can recycle paper into new paper, rocks too recycle themselves in this fascinating cycle, changing from one type to another over millions of years. So, just like a phoenix, rocks rise from their own ashes, changing and evolving in a never-ending cycle. Not all rocks are created equal. Let's dive into the three main types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. First, we have igneous rocks. These hot-headed rocks form when molten rock from the Earth's mantle cools and solidifies. Picture this. Magma, bubbling away beneath the Earth's crust, finally erupts from a volcano. The lava cools, hardens, and voila! You've got an igneous rock. They're like the superheroes of the rock world, born from fire and chaos. Some might say they're pretty igneous, don't you think? Next we have sedimentary rocks. These laid-back types are formed over time from the accumulation of sediment. Imagine a river carrying tiny bits of rock and debris to its mouth. Over time, these particles settle at the bottom and begin to compact. Add a few million years and you've got yourself a sedimentary rock. It's like baking a cake, but instead of flour and eggs, you're using sand, mud, and tiny fragments of other rocks. And just like a cake, they come in layers. Now on to metamorphic rocks. These shapeshifters are the chameleons of the rock world. They start as either igneous or sedimentary rocks. But under intense heat and pressure, they transform into completely different rocks. Imagine being squished and cooked until you become someone entirely new. No identity crisis here, just a rockin' makeover. Now why should we care about these different types of rocks? Well, each type tells us a unique story about the Earth's past. Igneous rocks with their crystalline structures tell us about volcanic activity and the movement of tectonic plates. Sedimentary rocks, with their layered appearance, provide a history book of the Earth's surface conditions. And metamorphic rocks? They give us a sneak peek into the intense pressures and high temperatures deep within the Earth's crust. But it's not just about their history. These rocks have unique physical properties too. Igneous rocks are hard and dense, great for construction. Sedimentary rocks, on the other hand, are usually softer and easily eroded, making them perfect for revealing fossils. And metamorphic rocks? Their varied mineral content makes them a geologist's dream for studying the Earth's interior. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that the Statue of Christ the Redeemer in Brazil is made of a type of metamorphic rock called soapstone? It's resistant to heat, acid, and electricity. 
It's a rock-solid choice for a statue that's meant to last. So the next time you see a rock, I want you to think about its journey. Was it born from fire, layered over time, or transformed under pressure? Is it hard and dense, soft and layered, or varied in its mineral content? And remember, no matter how ordinary it may seem, every rock has a story to tell. Remember, it's not just a rock, it's a fiery igneous, a layered sedimentary, or a transformed metamorphic. Now that we know our rock types, how do we identify them? Time to put on our detective hats. Being a rock detective is all about observation, testing, and a bit of knowledge. Rocks and minerals can be classified according to their composition and physical properties, and we're going to learn how to do just that. First off, we need to examine the rock's color. It might seem obvious, but the color of a rock can tell us a lot about its composition. For instance, igneous rocks like basalt are often dark due to their rich iron and magnesium content, while sedimentary rocks like sandstone can be a variety of colors, reflecting the different minerals they contain. Next, let's consider the rock's texture. Is it smooth or rough? Does it have large crystals or is it fine-grained? These details can give us clues about how the rock was formed. For example, igneous rocks that cooled quickly from lava or magma have a fine-grained texture, while those that cooled slowly have larger crystals. But we're not done yet. Another important test is hardness. You see, minerals have varying degrees of hardness, and we can identify them based on this property. One common way to test hardness is with a scratch test. For instance, if you can scratch the mineral with your fingernail, it's relatively soft. But if you need something harder like a steel file, then the mineral is quite hard. You might be wondering, what about those shiny bits in rocks? Well, you've noticed the luster, another key property. Luster refers to how light reflects off a mineral. It could be metallic, like pyrite, also known as fool's gold, or non-metallic, like the glassy luster of quartz. The last detective tool in our kit is the streak test. This involves scraping a mineral across a piece of unglazed porcelain, known as a streak plate. The color of the streak left behind can help identify the mineral. For instance, hematite, an iron ore, leaves a reddish-brown streak. Now, it's your turn to try these tests with your own rock samples. See what colors, textures, and hardness levels you can find. Test their luster and streak. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more rocks you test, the better you'll get at identifying them. And there you have it, the art of rock identification. It's a bit like being a detective, isn't it? Looking for clues, piecing together evidence, and solving the mystery of a rock's identity. So keep your eyes open and your detective hat on. The world is full of rocks waiting to be discovered and identified. Congratulations, you are now officially a rock detective. Ever thought about how many times a day you use a rock? Let's find out. Our world is built on a rocky foundation, quite literally. From the concrete under your feet to the towering skyscrapers, rocks and minerals are integral to our construction industry. The strength of granite, the durability of limestone, the insulation properties of basalt. Each rock has its own unique attributes that make it suitable for different construction purposes. But it's not all brute strength. Rocks are also the artists of the natural world. The elegant marble statues, the intricate mosaics, the shimmering quartz countertops, they all owe their beauty to the world of rocks and minerals. Now imagine a world without technology. No smartphones, no computers, no electric cars. Sounds pretty bleak, doesn't it? Well, you can thank rocks for that not being our reality. Many of the components that make up our modern devices are made from minerals. Silicon used in microchips is derived from sandstone. Your smartphone's vibrant screen? That's made possible by rare earth elements like yttrium and terbium, which are mined from various rocks. And it's not just in your pocket or on your desk. Rocks have a huge role to play in our energy sector. Coal, a sedimentary rock, has been a major source of our electricity for over a century. And in our quest for cleaner energy, we turn to rocks again. Uranium, housed in rocks, fuels our nuclear power plants, while geothermal energy is harnessed directly from the heat of the Earth's crust. Let's take a moment to appreciate the sparkle in our lives. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, these precious gems are all minerals. They've been adorning us and our possessions for thousands of years. But it's not just about their beauty. Diamonds, one of the hardest substances on Earth, are used in various industrial applications, from cutting tools to high-precision bearings. And would you believe rocks also find their way into our food? That's right. Salt, a mineral, is essential to our diet and adds flavor to our food. Even your morning cereal might contain trace minerals derived from rocks. So you see, rocks are more than just stones. 
They are in our buildings, our art, our technology, our energy, our jewelry, and even our food. They are an essential part of our lives, often in ways we don't even realize. So next time you use your smartphone, remember, you have a rock to thank for that. Now, let's travel back in time with the help of fossils. Fossils, my friends, are quite the time travelers, and they take us on a journey deep into Earth's past. They are the remnants or impressions of ancient organisms that lived millions and millions of years ago. So how do fossils form, you may ask? Well, it's a bit like baking a cake, but over a much, much longer time. When an organism dies, it gets buried under layers of sediment. Over time, these layers harden into rock, preserving the shape of the organism. Sometimes minerals seep in, replacing the organic material and creating a rock replica of the organism. This process is known as fossilization, and it's nature's way of keeping a record of its history. But what's the point of having a bunch of old bones and leaves preserved in rocks? Well, fossils are more than just ancient curiosities. They are the Earth's diary, telling tales of climate change, evolution and mass extinctions. They help us understand how life evolved, what creatures roamed the Earth before us, and how the environment has changed over time. For instance, by studying the fossils of tiny ocean creatures, scientists have discovered that Earth's climate was once much warmer than it is today. The presence of dinosaur fossils tells us about a time when giant reptiles ruled the Earth. And the sudden disappearance of many species in the fossil record gives us clues about mass extinctions. Fossils can even give us a glimpse into the behavior of ancient animals. Dinosaur footprints, for example, can tell us about their speed, size and social behavior. And let's not forget about plant fossils. They can provide valuable information about ancient climates and environments. For example, if we find a fossil of a tropical plant in a currently cold region, it suggests that the climate was once much warmer. So fossils are not just old bones, they are ancient stories waiting to be read. They are windows into Earth's past, giving us a glimpse of the long and fascinating history of our planet. Rocks and minerals are not just stones, they are the pages of Earth's fascinating story. In this exciting journey, we've uncovered the intriguing rock cycle, where rocks change, evolve and transform. We've met the three main rock types, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic, each with their unique characteristics and formation processes. We've also delved into the world of rock identification, learning how to classify rocks and minerals based on their composition and physical properties. But that's not all. We've discovered the many uses of rocks and minerals, from construction to cosmetics, and even in our everyday technology. And let's not forget about fossils, those windows into Earth's past, providing invaluable information about the history and evolution of life on our planet. So next time you see a rock, remember, it's not just a stone, it's a piece of the Earth's story. Keep exploring, keep learning and keep rocking.